morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the Aga Khan Museum and our beautiful Aga Khan Park. It's my deepest honor to welcome you here today. And before we start, I would like to acknowledge that the land on which we stand today uh, has been a site for cultural connection or, and for many cultures before us, including those of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, um, the Wendat, and more recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. I thank you and I thank you for allowing us to share the land and to live and work on this land with you all. Today is a very special day because over the last year we have all been having a hard time and we have all looked for ways to find solace, contemplation, reflection, sanctuary from a very, very difficult and still ongoing pandemic. And we've been doing that as people, but also through our work as we realize that the most important thing to retain and to fight for is human connection. And human connection across cultures and across differences, especially as we noticed the, the frictions in societies increasing in the wake of the crisis. So we at the Aga Khan Museum have been working very hard and have been thinking very hard how we could make a contribution to our community, to our city, to our people that we love. And then we thought, who are our partners? Who share our mandate of peacemaking, of building bridges between cultures? And who better than the YMCA? especially because they offer so many opportunities for encounter to reflect, to contemplate, as we will be doing today, but also because through their work, just like us, they are fighting for positive, inclusive societies. So I am very, very pleased today to welcome you all here today. We are launching a partnership that will involve sessions from the YMCA here on site and sessions in the museum for YMCA seniors to contemplate, to reflect and to seek sanctuary and mindfulness through the arts. And I'm very, very happy that one of our guests here today already made a connection that I even had not picked up on. We are currently showing an exhibition called State of Play, a contemporary art ex uh, installation that really ties in with that idea of coming together to have a good time, but also to reflect and to imagine brighter futures. So thank you very much for being here today. I very much look forward to um, working with the YMCA, a wonderful partner, and I now pass it on over to Mehdi. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, first of all, a big thank you to Aga Khan Museum for having us on this glorious day. Uh, I'm thrilled to announce our partnership, which will aim at uh, improving the health and well-being of our communities. I think this comes natural to both organizations as they share the values, uh, to name a few would be inclusion and diversity. This program will be offered virtually and also in person, as Orika was mentioning, and uh, it will offer the program which will have two components to it. The first component will be the education part, and the second one would be the, the mindfulness part. The education part will be hosted by the curators from the uh, Aga Khan Museum, and it will take the participants on a journey to experience this beautiful treasure in a very interactive uh, and, and engaging way. This will be on the YMCA uh, um, uh, Bright Spot platform, as well as uh, the, uh, the platform of the museum, which is a museum without walls. The mindfulness part will be trying to equip the participants with means and techniques to practice mindfulness and meditation. I think this is a great uh, partnership. Um, I believe when the pandemic hit us about a year ago, 
um, the YMCA realized that they have to change the way they are providing programs in their 450 locations and quickly pivot. The virtual Y, which was launched this January, was in fact a response to that need. Um, the Bright Spot program, which, which uh, targets the older adults and provides them with a range of programs from dance and fitness classes to uh, trivia nights and small group discussions is a part of this uh, virtual offering. We believe that what Ahan Museum offers is a great complement and addition to this program. So we are very excited for that. On a personal note, I was telling Gorica that I have been, I have visited this museum numerous times. Uh, being an Iranian Canadian, we always take pride of seeing a lot of treasure and artifacts from old Persian here. So thank you very much to you and your staff for curating and putting this on display for the world to see. So thank you very much. I know everybody has had a very uh, rough year this past year. I'm very excited to be in front of you and see the smiling faces and be here in person. We look forward to this and I would like to pass this on to the expert who will be uh, leading the uh, mindfulness class. Thank you very much. No. Well, thank you, Mary, for the kind words. I don't consider myself as an expert. I might have some, a little bit of expertise, but uh, I wouldn't say that. And good morning to our participants from uh, Bright Spot and uh, online YMCA class. I am privileged to be here today. It's this beautiful setting and uh, doing a first class live after a year of pandemic. Okay, so without further ado, uh, we can start the class. We will go for 20 minutes. Uh, and I'm just going to start the timer. There is something with the timer. Okay, so here we are in the body positions that we choose. Most of us here are sitting, but some of our participants might be lying down at home. And in terms of body position, mindfulness practice, it's non-prescriptive. We choose the body position that works for us. Now we do start by either closing our eyes or keeping them slightly open. The reason for that is our eyesight takes about 80% of energy from all other senses. And it's the easiest sense to get distracted. So by closing our eyes, we're just dedicating a little bit more energy so we can observe within. But again, we might choose to keep them either slightly open or open. Then the next thing, we just try to readjust the body position if necessary. And what are we aiming for is straightfulness and stillness. Keeping our back relatively straight with the aim for spine erect will help our breathing muscles to move freely, especially our diaphragmatic muscle that plays an important role in relaxed breathing. And then stillness helps with the stillness of the mind. So the body position we choose should be relaxing enough. So we don't have a need to move due to pain evoked. So now that we are grounded in the body posture, we direct our attention towards breathing sensations. 
and we start observing our breathing sensations in the belly. Observing as the belly expands on the inhaling breath and observing as the belly deflates back towards the spine on the exhaling breath. So being present and staying with the inhaling breath throughout. And being present for and staying with the exhaling breath throughout. Now, there is no prescribed way how we should experience this movement in the belly. And sometimes it's helpful to place palm on top of the belly. And just being aware how the palm and the belly move together. Now, again, the reason why we start focusing on the belly first is just practical. It's supportive to the practice. First reason, just easier to detect those cross movements. And the second one is by placing our attention on the belly. We are indirectly observing the diaphragmatic muscle. And like any other muscle in the body, diaphragmatic muscle responds to stress by stiffening up. We are not aiming to relax the muscle. However, by just observing the belly, that is what is happening. And why is that important? Well, once the diaphragmatic muscle gets a little bit more engaged, naturally helps with activating parasympathetic nervous system, which is rest and digest or relaxation response. So breathing in, noticing the way the belly is expanding. Breathing out. Noticing the way the belly deflates back towards the spine. Noticing the gradualness of the movement. Staying with the inhaling breath throughout. And staying with the exhaling breath throughout. Now, by this point, we probably realize the resistance of our mind to stay focused on something simple as breathing sensations. And as per literature, that's natural. Our mind naturally shifts attention frequently. So in mindfulness practice, we are continuously engaged in mindfulness cycle. We place our attention on breathing sensations. We 
we are aware of the breathing sensations. And then sooner or later, our mind will wander off. It could be our thoughts. It could be other body sensations or emotions. No matter what that is, the instruction is that as soon as we become aware that our mind has shift attention to something else other than reading sensations, is that we notice what it is and the very same moment we're letting go, shifting attention back to breathing sensations. So as the mindfulness meditation is concerned, becoming aware when mind wanders off, and letting go, it is an increment in practice. So whether we are focused on a breath and we are aware of that, or we are not focused on a breath and we are aware of that, we are mindful. So throughout the practice, we take this attitude of openness, curiosity, and most importantly, kindness towards the experience and the experiencer, which in this case is ourselves. And during the meditation practice, we could be going through the mindfulness cycle numerous times. And that is okay. Breathing in. Noticing as the belly expands. Breathing out, noticing as the belly deflates back towards the spine. Staying with the exhaling breath throughout. From research perspective, focusing closer attention to our exhaling breath, it's very important. Our exhaling breath is connected with the vagus nerve. A very important nerve that helps shift from sympathetical nervous system to parasympathetic nervous system. Or we're more familiar as fight and flight to rest and digest. So every time we breathe out, more mindful, more truly, we are using our natural resource to relax. 
and that helps with calmly relating. with any experience in the present moment. We could do a little bit of experiment here and now. We can focus on our exhaling breath a little bit closer. And we can try to breathe out just a little bit slower than usual and a little bit longer than usual. Breathing up, just a little bit slower than usual and a little bit longer than usual. Not that this would usually do, but at this moment, we can even engage the breathing muscles at the end of the exhaling breath. And once we believe that we breathe out completely, we push a little bit more. Once we do so, we might experience immediate feedback from the body. The experience of release, where it feels like not just releasing the air, but also releasing tensions. Breathing out, just a little bit slower than usual. And a little bit longer than usual. Engaging the breathing muscles and pushing just a little bit more. What we, my, we also notice It's the inhaling breath that follows. Feels much deeper. And it brings some sort of sense of calmness. It almost feels like we just need to allow air to come in. Breathing in, knowing that we are breathing in. Breathing out, knowing that we are breathing out. Becoming aware when our mind wanders off to something else which could be easily the highway that we are hearing right now. So whether that is a sound, a thought that is usually connected with something that we want to resolve, or we become aware of other parts of the body. Any experience within our space of awareness we relate to peacefully, calmly, with kindness, befriending ourselves for the experience, and without furthering we let go. And once we let go, we will notice that we're back to breathing. So 
So the working hard or trying to be disciplined to stay focused on the breath, it's not goal. But rather, we focus on the breath loosely. Focusing on the breath helps with opening up our space of awareness. But staying focused on the breath is actually by letting go. Once we realize that we are not focused on the breath, Breathing in. Being present for the inhaling breath. Breathing out. Feeling the way the belly deflates back towards the spine. Noticing when mind wanders off and just gently, calmly, with kindness, we let go. Once we let go, we're back to breathing sensations. We're back with a movement in the belly. So when we feel comfortable, we could allow ourselves to move, maybe stretch if you need a little bit of stretching. And when ready, we can open our eyes. So Sam, I think we will skip the questions part today uh, just because I, I can't really hear members. So I apologize in advance to our members. And I want to thank them for participating in this. Uh, I don't know. I feel privileged to be here. It's a beautiful place. And I strongly recommend to come and visit. Okay, have a wonderful day, everyone.